Folks, have you binged on Tiger King? I have. Saw the whole thing. Didn't take a long time to watch it. Even watched the extra episode that dropped uh, last week. Anyhow, uh, there was a trial for Joe Exotic. I've given you the spoiler alerts already. Yeah, he was convicted. Um, but I had an opportunity to speak with one of the jurors in that case. We saw part one of my interview last night. Let's take a look at part two to get some insight into that trial because it was in federal court. And you know why I don't like federal courts? They don't let cameras in because I don't know why. I don't know what they're hiding, uh, but there's no cameras in federal courts. Uh, but, but I did speak with the juror to get some insight into what happened at the trial of Joe Exotic, the Tiger King. So let's talk about some more of the uh, evidence in this case and some of the characters surrounding him. And, and Garrison is the one who, who jumps out to a lot of folks. He's known as like the businessman in the Netflix series. Um, interesting character. Um, what role did he play, and, and were there any recordings associated with him that you got to hear as evidence in this case? Oh yes, he um, <clears throat> he had had a record. There was a recording of him and the undercover agent at, at uh, the zoo, and we. It was a long recording. It was about forty-five minutes. The first twenty minutes was pretty much dead air because the they were just walking, but. Then it was um, uh, Joe actually talking to him, the undercover agent, saying that the first guy he hired to kill her ran away with his money, so he wanted to try again. And um, that's the kind of thing that wasn't shown on the on the documentary, which made people think that he was set up. But we heard the recordings of him actually talking to the hitman and talking about money. Okay, and when you say the hitman, this this isn't Alan Glover, the the no. alleged hitman in the series that we watch. This is a subsequent right. hitman who's an undercover. Yes, yes, that's the one I'm referring to with that. Every okay, every bit because of that's that's the biggest question, right? Is that Alan Glover, uh, the way the series portrays it, gets three thousand dollars, but never even goes to Florida, ends up going on vacation in South Carolina, but was that clear to to everyone in the jury as well, or was it miss? Was it misrepresented oh. um, in the series? No, that was absolutely accurate. He took the money and he went to South Carolina and um, he, I think he drank all the money away and bought drugs and I think he even mentioned a hooker. Um, but yeah, we knew that he he never had any intention of killing her. He just wanted the money. So your verdict of guilty for murder for hire is based upon, is it based upon him giving the money to Alan Glover or him having a conversation with an undercover uh, wanting to hire another hitman? Well, it was actually um, everything with Alan Glover, all of the um, evidence was either in a text or I think it was all text, actually. I don't think there was any recordings for him. But everything was in there that we, all the evidence we needed was was there to uh, convict Joe on that one. And as far as the undercover, it was the, uh, the audio tape. So there was, we never had to really piece anything together. It was all kind of handed to us on a silver platter. Describe that moment. Please describe that moment as he takes the stand. Well, um, we came back from, actually, I think it was first thing in the morning on our final day. We walk in and he was already on the witness stand. And um, of course, we couldn't talk about it. So I don't know what everybody else was thinking, but I, I had a feeling that he would because his ego wouldn't let him not take the stand. Um, he... From where I, what I could tell, he was his attorney's worst nightmare. He couldn't stop talking, and and the the his attorney kept trying to get him just to answer what he was asking, and he would just offer so much more information. And he did a lot of fake crying. Um, he just uh, there was no sympathy for him at all. Not at all. It was it was kind of like a performance for him. Did he have any explanation for the for the um, recording, 
for the money that was given? I mean, did he go on the stand and attack uh, the victim in this one, Carol Baskin? Did he go after her? I don't. I don't remember that he did. Um, I think it was everything was just kind of a setup. Everything he was trying to uh, say that Jeff Lowe set him up on everything, and and he just went along with things to. Um, keep Jeff happy and to be able to stay at the zoo. So he would go along with what Jeff wanted. And um, as far as Carol Baskin, I don't remember him really attacking her or anything she said. So did you or any other members of the jury want to hear from Jeff Lowe? And were you a little, oh. was there any frustration that you didn't get to hear from him? I was very frustrated. I really was hoping we could hear from him because that would have, settled so many things as far as um, how he ended up owning the zoo. And um, I I kind of wanted to hear him deny that he had any part in some of the things, but he, they, he was never, he never took the stand. So that was frustrating. Is there anything that he could have said or revealed or been cross-examined about that may have made you think, oh, maybe Joe Exotic was set up by Jeff? I think if he would have said um, that he, if he would have said that he gave Alan Glover the phone that he took to South Carolina, if he would have, um, if he would have said that much and that uh, he had that phone set up in his name and um, and if he would have said that he set it up for uh, Alan to get a uh, an ID, a fake ID, if he would have said things like that, I think um, it, I think it would have changed everything. But there was there just wasn't any evidence to prove that that Joe was set up. 